President Mohamed Buhari has said that his government has attained a pass mark with high impact projects. Buhari made the assertion at the final ministerial performance re review retreat to assess the degree of progress made in the implementation of his administration's nine priority agenda at the State House in Abuja. The president stated that he has met the yearnings and expectations of Nigerians. Buhari's assessment comes on the heels of criticisms from the op opposition parties accusing his administration of poor handling of security challenges and the economy. The president, however, said he, his over seven-year reign had not been without tremendous successes in areas of agriculture, economics, infrastructure, security, health and anti-corruption, with over 3,800 kilometers of new roads belt throughout the nation. Now, on the aspect of the economy, he restated that the country had witnessed seven consecutive quarters of growth after negative growth rates recorded in the second and third quarters of 2020. Joining us live to discuss this is Shehu Musa Gabam. He is the national chairman of the Social Democratic Party, SDP. Thank you so much, Mr. Gabam, for joining us. Yeah. Right, Mr. Gabam, um, you, of course, has, uh, you've been in the political scene for a very mm -hmm. long time. You obviously have been there uh, from the beginning of Mr. President's um, um, reign in 2015 up until now, you obviously live in this country and you have seen the trajectory of whether growth or reg retrogression of this government. So I'll start by saying, Mr. President has said that he has done a lot, especially on high impact projects. Do you agree? And what are some of these projects that you can attest to if there be any? Well, I, I do not expect to know that. I'm the one who traveled that road. Last week, I traveled from here to Abuja, I mean, from here to Kaduna, from Kaduna to Kano, from Kano to Jigawa. And I can tell you without fear of any contradiction, it's one of the worst roads any human being can fly to. The potholes are terrible. I've never seen this kind of uh, terrible damage federal road like what I've gone through in the last two weeks. I heard about it severally, but, but I witnessed it firsthand. I went through it. It was unbearable for any decent human being. Number two, if you go to the south, virtually there is no any road that this government have embarked upon and have completed, including Ibadan Lagos Express Road. The road that was uh, that, that is ongoing from Abuja, Akwanga and so on and so forth, is still uncompleted. Now, if you are talking about infrastructure, I believe road is one of them, which is critical for citizens, for movement, for convenient movement of goods and services, and so on and so forth. For in terms of roads, projects, I don't know how this government can score itself excellent or even good. It is bad, and it remains very bad so far. We'll wait and see till the end of the administration, possibly, it is likely they might complete the road. But so far, it's very bad. I witnessed it. I fly the road. I know what it is. Now, in terms of other projects like the railway, I think so far it is only Lagos, Ibadan, rail that are working. And I heard there's one in between Inugu or somewhere that that is function. Benin, Benin, uh, this is a dysfunction. But the road from uh, uh, the entire south is south out is cut off. People cannot fly. I had a workshop last week. People couldn't come to Abuja because they need a railway to come down to Abuja. The, 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 the road movements are close to impossible. Apart from the kidnapping, insecurity, and so on and so forth, the road cannot, uh, you know, the road is in bad shape. Absolutely partial. And the president knows this. His ministers know this. Every Nigerian knows this. So I don't know why a government should score itself in something that can be assessed physically. It is not as if it is invisible projects. These are visible projects. These are seeable projects. So for me, it is okay for the government to write itself. But if you ask every average Nigerian based on uh, geogra geographical locations, they will tell you, no, it is not right. In terms of agriculture, I haven't seen it. Virtually, people are sleeping 
without eating in most of the day. If they eat in the morning, it's hardly for them to eat in the afternoon or in the night. As somebody who buys food for orphans, I have more than 30 orphans that I take care of. I can tell that. I go to market, I buy food, I know the cost of things. And I, if, if the, 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 the farming they are talking about, the rice, which they, they, they have said that they have, uh, have it in surplus, the cost of rice has not dropped. Rather, it has gone higher. So either way, I don't know how anybody can say that uh, you have achieved a landmark in, in, in agriculture, whether we have food supply that is sufficient in the country, uh, given the boundary, given the level of destruction of food stock and the people in the, the villages that have farmed their food. And uh, right now we are having a lot of flood all over the place that have consumed a lot of farmland. Mm -hmm. So so on and so forth. For me, I haven't seen that, but it's okay for the government to 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 rent themselves. Normally, you know, government will score themselves very low. They have fell in virtually every field of human endeavor. In terms of security, I, I don't need to speak about that. I believe the government can also say that they have fell in terms of security. Yes, there are an attempt now to restore law and order, but uh, it still remains to be seen. It's not very very effective as expected, but there's an attempt to restore normalcy uh, around the areas that are highly security vulnerable. Let, let me, because, uh, you know, many people would say that maybe because you are a member of, a, you know, an opposition party, you're on the SDP, you probably might not see what the president is seeing. But I'd like to give you some background to some of the projects that the president is making reference to. Um, let me just say, he, he, he talks about some of the notable achievements to include the completion of the 326-kilometer Itakwe ajaukuta Wari rail line and railway ancillary facilities, uh, the completion of over 156.5 kilometers um, Lagos Ibadan standard gauge railway modernization project with extension to Lagos Port and Apapa, he goes on to talk about road projects in the administration which have been constructed. Uh, they constructed about 408 kilometers of roads, 2,499 kilometers of Sukuk roads and maintenance of 15,961 kilometers of roads across the country. They talked about key projects like the Niger Link Bridge, Anambra and Delta states with 10.30 kilometers road approaching... Um, um, the approach road. Now, they also talked about the rehabilitation and construction of the Lagos Shagabu Ibadan dual carriage. Then they talked about the ongoing rehabilitation of the Abuja Kaduna Zaria Kanu Road, among others. Now, you're saying to me that these roads that you've been plying and some people you know have been plying are not good, but this is what the government is telling us. So maybe the government um, is using a different road and you're probably using a different one. Is that what it is? Okay. Okay. I, 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 most of this project that you have mentioned is the same thing I have said. They, they, they are not completed the project at all. You mentioned Kaduna Abuja Road. I dare you tomorrow fly that road and you will tell a different story as a, as a journalist. Most of the projects they have mentioned, they have not been completed. They are ongoing projects. And I believe if you complete a project, then you can talk about the project. Some of these rail projects, they inherited it from PDP government. And they are completing it, which is okay. The railway, some one, one or two of them have been completed. The Abuja Kaduna one has been completed. The train were flying before the, the, the bomb uh, that disrupted the, the, the railway track, uh, movement. So most of the other areas they are talking about, there was nothing as if the project had been complete. The road is smooth, it's safe for anybody to, to, to fly the road. So if completion of project means that ongoing project, then that is a different thing entirely. I'm not being partisan in what I'm saying. Okay. You know, I believe in national projects. And once a national project is being completed, it's not for the benefit of either people in government or, or in opposition or outside the opposition. It's for the benefit of citizens of Nigeria. And of course, it will be in my own interest to appreciate the government for completing projects, reducing the suffering of Nigeria. But I tell you that in, in just two weeks ago, I flew Abuja, and it's terrible. And anybody who flies that road, ask him. He will give you an accurate assessment of what I have given you. 
So, yes, the, the project is ongoing, but it's not completed. The suffering remains the same. Nothing has changed. Let's move the away. delay remains the same. Nothing has changed. Okay, let's move away so, from infrastructure. Let's, let's talk about health. He, make, he made mention of the economy. He talked about COVID-19 and how many people had been vaccinated. Uh, he talked about um, the economy, which is something that I would want to you know, dwell more on. But let's start by talking about the health sector. We've had, in the past six months, a total brain drain in the medical profession in this country. We're still seeing that happen every other day. Doctors, nurses, health workers at every level fl fleeing this country to countries even um, like Saudi Arabia. We're seeing them in the UK, working in the NHS. So again, let's talk about the health sector and what this government has been able to do. And then, of course, we'll pivot to the economy. Well, in terms of the health sector, I believe if the, this government has injected so much resources to rehabilitate the health sector, they keep some of the hospitals in Nigeria, even based on, I mean, even if it is based on regional basis, to produce one of the best hospitals that can serve as a referral hospital in the country, that would have saved some of the situation Nigerians are going through. But even the state house clinic, that's supposed to pay maximum attention to the president himself, the president traveled out for medical attention. So I don't know how anybody can make any suggestion in any way or manner that there's an improvement in our health sector. If you visit virtually every hospital, I live in Abuja, visit every general hospital in Abuja, you will see the story is, 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 is very, very pathetic. I've been visiting hospitals, I've been seeing patients in the uh, relative friends that are in the hospital, if you go to any government hospital, you will shed tears with the kind of management, the public relation, the attention of the doctors, the equipment they are using. Then for me, I feel that maybe it's either the president has been wrongly briefed by the ministers in charge of the, the health sector, that there's great improvement. If there is, what are the facilities that have been installed? These are clear things that can be seen. These are physical equipment that have to do with the management of health of an individual. So in the absence of having that, and in the absence of having a government hospital that you can classify as uh, not, not even the very best, on the average, that can immediately attend to people's health challenges, you can say, yes, these are effort. The last hospital that I can tell you that have been equipped fully, or not fully, but a reasonable essay you can talk about was during Ubasanjo's time. When Nasrul Arufai was the minister of FCT, for example, all the general hospitals in Abuja were fully uh, rejiggled, re-equipped, reorganized, retrained. If we enter general hospital, So Plus Politics, we still have with us the um, national chairman of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, Shewu Musa Gaba. Mr. Gaba, before we went on the break, you were too, trying to wrap up your thoughts on what's happening in the health sector. Um, but quickly, let's let's you know, quickly go to the economy. And I want to mostly talk about the oil and um, the oil theft that we have had to um, witness over the past few months, the alarm that was raised. And now, of course, um, the billion dollar contract that was awarded to Tom Polo and the very interesting revelations that have been made by Tom Polo. And we also saw the destruction by the army and the lack of investigation in that area. Let's also not forget that Mr. President sits as the Minister of Petroleum in this country. Um, and this is, has one way or the other affected our economy. Uh, don't forget that OPEC has also decided to reduce the number, uh, the, the, our output in terms of um, oil um, production. So again, these are all of some of the factors that are affecting our economy. But how well has Mr. President done? Because he gave himself a pass mark in that department. Well, as I'm talking to you, there's oil scarcity in, uh, oil scarcity in Abuja. I don't know other part of the, the country. Uh, but I know that uh, in federal capital territory now, there are queues virtually everywhere. That's number one. Number two, the, the, the oil delivery in Nigeria has been unprecedented in the history of this country. And it's not as if the security agencies are not aware or the intelligence agencies are not aware. It's a conspiracy of people that are in government, plus the security agencies that led to this kind of, this kind of 
very terrible way of grounding the economy. Few individuals were given a leverage or opportunity to loot the country unchecked, unhindered. Otherwise, nobody on earth can convince me that the level of trivery of our oil in connivance with foreign partners that our intelligence agencies are not aware. Most of the oil sectors or areas are being monitored by security agencies. Mm. The Navy, the Air Force, and the Army, and other security agencies like the SSS and so on and so forth. It is absolutely impossible as somebody who has worked in government for anybody to convince me that the security agencies are not aware of this, or the government officials are not aware, or the NNPC are not aware of this issue. I have heard the MD of NNPC saying clearly that government officials, religious leaders are involved, and security agencies are involved in the cartel. He mentioned it himself. So if it is an indictment, the MD of NNPC have indicted the president. The president is the minister of petroleum. Hmm. And, the minister, and the president have not exonerated himself so far. I had the, the, the MD of NPP yesterday clearly saying that the, the level of TV have reduced. They are now in controlling of most of the, 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 the crime and criminality sector of the, of, of the oil uh, uh, pipelines and so on and so forth. Was it that they are not aware until alarm was raised? Is that wow. the level that we have descended to as a nation? And the president is the minister of petroleum. Is accountable to that sector apart from the subsidy, mm -hmm. the so called subsidy to which the president himself, when he was campaigning, he said there was nothing like subsidy in Nigeria. He said everything is fraud. Mm -hmm. well, Yet that fraud has not been established. Yes, they keep on taking away this subsidy. Yet the economy is going down. The purchasing power of Nigeria has gone close to a zero level. Well, Investors are leaving the country. So, I believe the minister, the, the president himself, who is the minister of petroleum, knows exactly what the truth is. There is no remittance to the to, to the federal government uh, account at all. None. We, we have to the go. The country is ruled by the grace of God. Period. Well, Period. And that's it. Well, Mr. Gabum, I wish that time was on our side to continue this conversation, but I must appreciate you for being part of the conversation. Sheo Musa Gabum is the national chairman of the SDP. Unfortunately, uh, connections uh, did not let us um, have the best of time, but thank you so much for being here. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it on the show tonight, but before I go, I would like to give you my take before we say our goodbyes. Stay with us. Whether well, it's smoke, the saying goes, election, if nothing else, serves as a test of our capacity for good judgment. Now, the electorate is made up of three main types of voters. There is the psychophant, too drunk on a cult personality, falling through the haze of self-serving lies. The statistician is the second who complies, you know, or compiles information and facts to justify their long-held choice in a candidate. And the last but never the least is the emotional voter, the one who's certain beyond any logical argument that they're, they are presented with, uh, that their instinctive choice is the right choice. Now, that is the interesting thing about elections. Our choices are completely down to our impulses. No matter how much homework that you know, we do to inform our choice, we cannot sometimes control the candidates. The process is as much a role of the dice for us in, in that, that our chosen candidate will do as he or she has promised um, you know, if what the said candidate said he will do um, so that he will win his race. Now, so while as individuals, the power we have over our outcome is limited, what is still and always uh, till the very last minute before we cast our vote is our choice. In every relationship that ends badly, the end is never truly unforeseen. The red flags line, you know, they align the road towards that end. We just have to be willing to see it. So when a candidate for one party publicly without regard, you know, for appearance of their action supports a candidate from an opposition party, that is definitely a burning red flag, bellowing red smoke as clear as day. Well, make of that what you will. I'm Mary Anacone. Have a good evening. <laughs>